Hello from Tina Dragon's YouTube channel. This is Jisifu again. Okay, so today we'll be talking about the uh, Samlo Sangung theory and uh, let you understand a lot of things in one very fun lecture. Um, the topic today is pretty controversial. Okay, people will be like, oh, I have this viewpoint, but I think that way. But Okay, forget about that. Okay, we're not discussing right here. So you're here to learn. Okay, so be learning the knowledge that I'm going to teach you today. So the topic is basically mainly around uh, tattoo. Okay, like the stuff that you, you know, put on the body. Okay, tattoo. And a lot of other things like gu. Wow, how is that related? Okay, gu spiritual worms group magic okay and also will lead to understanding about how energy works and how our body the clothing and all that stuff work okay so a big topic and yeah so a lot of people are asking uh is tattoo good or bad you know like that kind of question now in the past i will not accept disciples with tattoos or uh, they will have to remove it okay now why and why do I choose it to why do I like have this rule and because you know a lot of people are saying now tattoos are getting more common uh, everyone is accepting it and you know many cultures have tattoos too okay now in this video you will understand why tattoo is not good and tattoo is good okay I'm letting you understand how this thing works it can be used for good reason or also a bad reason okay so like what I said before with food and energy and all that stuff energy or anything in this world is neutral it depends on how you use it okay even cooking you can be cooking with a good intention but your skill sucks it harms the, uh, the person eating the food right so understanding what is going on is the key now colors in our um, uh, lecture on food paper color okay we already explained about the five uh, main color but basically you can explain any color in this world and you can watch that video again now i'm going to just go into the tattoo topic okay uh not explaining all the colors from the beginning you can watch that one if you like usually the ink that you use for tattoo okay is black some will use green, some will use black. But it doesn't matter what you're doing, you're always just putting ink into your skin and drawing a picture, right? It can be a picture, it can be word or something like that. Now, what will this cause? Like, what will, what will happen when you do this? Except for, oh, people look at it and it looks pretty, okay? Now, what else is happening? You don't know, something that you don't know. It is the energy work that is actually changing. What? Yeah, your energy body is changing. Okay, now look. Our body, we all have a physical body, okay? Our body is like a container. Container, okay? The inside contains our uh, soul, our energy inside. And the outside outputs its power, its light, what we call, okay? the power, the form, something you can see, okay? So we are all like a container and storing stuff inside us, okay? Now, when you um, put things right here, anything, let's say, okay, now my, my arm is open up, okay? If now I put this over, you cannot see my arm anymore, right? This is green. Now, how do I appear to you? Now the light from my body is skin tone color. That's the light that I'm giving off. You can see it, right? Now I want to show you only green light. See, I am giving off green light. Very simple idea right here. What you put on the body is going to be what uh, other people see, right? <laughs> Very simple. You put like uh, uh, a butterfly here. People see you right here outputting a butterfly right so it changes the light and at the same time 
We, our body, absorb light. Okay? We are all like uh, uh, absorbing uh, uh, container. We absorb things from the outside. We absorb light, heat, and all kinds of elements from the external of our body. And we output from the inside and out, but we also absorb from the outside and in. Okay? Agree? <laughs> oh, you don't agree? Okay, well, look. You go to a beach, and what do you do? Well, uh, and then the sunlight goes in you, right? And you get a sunburn. Okay, so you get hot when uh, the up there is hot, right? You get cold when outside is cold. We absorb the temperature. We absorb the energies, the elements from the outside. Now, let me give you a, a little experiment right here and show you what I mean, okay? Now, this is basically a container, okay? It's yellow, like our skin, a little bit like our skin, okay? Now, this yellow container combined with light coming from the outside, okay? If I go like that, what, what do you see? Okay. Yellow light giving off, right? Now when I go like that and you stand inside this container, imagine you're standing inside the container. For sure, you're going to see a lot of yellow coming in, right? Okay, now I draw a butterfly right here. And then I do that again. What do you, what do you see? You see a butterfly shadow. Simple, okay? So, light itself is neutral, okay? Light itself is neutral. Um, from outside of your body, coming in, okay? How, like, what will it turn out to be? And what kind of uh, stuff you're welcoming in, okay? That's the thing. When you do tattoo, you're putting things on your body and it helps you to welcome in this kind of stuff this kind of energy. If you use black ink, black absorb white, okay? In uh, the nine star theory or the full paper color lesson, we talked about it already. Not going to explain it any anymore, okay? So black absorb number one, D1, D1 white energy. It absorb potentials, okay? From the pre-heaven dimension. When you use black ink to draw stuff on your body, you are always sucking in, like let's say, okay, here I draw a Tai Chi diagram or something like that, okay? And then this part will always attract that number one element, the white uh, energy, to do this action or to give you this kind of stuff, whatever you're trying to welcome in, okay? Now, uh, if you use green, okay? That's green showing outside. What you're gonna welcome? Green energy, okay? When you when you welcome in green, that is the Ling Hei. Okay, green energy. We talked about it in the five direction uh, stuff already. Green basically is the uh, it's the energy that helps you to push elements around, push push things around, like from one side to another side. It's like a bridging. Uh, power okay it brings things around move things around that kind of stuff okay so when it's like when you eat veggie it speed up your system inside so when you welcome in stuff with like green color okay it will bring you that kind of energy that kind of light around you okay now green also uh, relates to the what we call the D3 number three element number three element is uh, corresponding to th like when you have inspirations around you okay uh, that kind of energy so it spark up inspiration uh, energy around you and these energy will change to a form according to what picture it is and it will affect the way you think okay these three go into D4 inside affecting the way your brain thinks and then it affects the way you will feel and trigger up a new action, okay? So in Chinese, ancient Chinese culture, they call tattoo, qi chang, okay? To, to poke in the green. Basically, the chang, okay? This color is basically a green color, 
and green color uh, is the color of the ink that they use, okay? Now this green ink, when it goes on you, okay? What happened is you, your light that you give off is different right now, okay? So if you have this kind of uh, tattoo, green ink tattoo, okay? The light that it gives off, it produces the number three element, like the inspirational uh, energy. And this energy will be around you changing and affecting the way you think. So, when people are really lacking confidence, okay, let's say they're very weak inside, okay, the heart is very weak, not like weak as in like very skinny, okay, weak as in the mind, it's very weak. They will poke and do a tattoo of something very um, powerful. Let's say they like a tiger, rah, very powerful, okay. Now, the, the tiger, the power of the tiger makes them feel very powerful, right? Now, it becomes a kind of energy that floats around them. So when they're walking around, this thing will help them to feel and think as like a tiger. It makes them more powerful, more confident. And basically, that's the main thing that will happen. It changes the way you think, gives you the vibe around you, right? Okay, now that's the main uh, good side of the tattoo. But the problem is you cannot remove it. So when you don't need it, <laughs> you can't really remove that stuff. It's always inside you. Sometimes people like each other very much. They don't want to forget them or they want to stick to each other all the time. So they tattoo the name of other, uh, like their, their other half somewhere on the body. Now what happened is, it creates the same kind of energy, okay? Influencing your uh, creativity, your inspiration, your, your the energy around here that affect the way you think. So you always think about the other half. Now the good side is you always remember and feel each other very well. The bad thing is when there's some shit happen and there's like a break, break up period, okay? You two will have a lot of issues because the two of you are always having this energy linking each other up. So when you're mad, the other person always like can feel the madness. When you don't like the hate energy coming up, this person always will feel that and hate you back. So it's hard to get rid of as well because both of you will have a lot of linkage right here when you do the tattoo, okay? It's like a mark. <laughs> you mark the two, well, you set the linkage, right? <laughs> so it's hard to get rid of. So basically, uh, there are alternatives for people to like for example if you really want to bring in energies of different types okay you can choose let's say a t-shirt uh, some kind of clothing with a different design okay maybe today you want uh, you want a tiger t-shirt for the power okay so you wear a tiger t-shirt and you have the tiger at the back and stuff like that basically that's uh, something that that change okay as we develop fashion because you know, oh, something on top of you can actually affect the way you feel, the way you think, and also affect the way people think about you. Let's say, okay, you wear a tiger t-shirt right here, okay? People look at you, they will feel th that you have more power because you're wearing that tiger t-shirt, right? Giving off that vibe. Now, if you have the tattoo, it's the same thing. When people look at you, there, there goes the power, okay? Now, tattoo cannot be removed, right? So people will say, uh, well, I'll just use something to cover it up. Okay, it doesn't really work because it's like this. When you're covering up something, okay, the power of that tiger or whatever the tattoo is, is still inside this layer, okay? When I cover it up, you cannot see it from the outside. You are seeing this, like this one, a crane, okay, right now. But inside is a tiger. So this crane will always have the vibe of a tiger when they reach you. So you feel that I'm a crane, but I'm a very powerful and fierce tiger. I cannot make you feel that this crane is actually a weak and jolly or whatever, okay, kind of crane. Because the heart behind it, the power behind it is always coming through from this layer. So the good side of having no tattoo is that you always have a base that is clean and like 100% pure, okay? We say pure, meaning like you're born like this, that's how it is, okay? So pure, 
So you can mix it with anything. It's like when you're white, okay, like a white paint, you can mix white paint with anything to create new colors. But if you already have colors below it, whenever you mix, it's always going to be something there, okay? That's why tattoo is not very good sometimes, okay? Now, another thing is, okay, tattoo in other colors, other form, not only uh, green or black, but sometimes they do, like the Japanese, they do color, very colorful, right? Now, that is the same thing like when you're doing clothing, same kind of theory. You are just changing the outside, the, the, the outside right here, okay? So when light shines in, it welcomes in the pre-heaven energy of this whatever you're showing into your body. And it gets into you. And also when you output your power, it always have this kind of stuff, this vibe, okay, sticking to it. Now, as I said before, all colors are neutral. How do you tell? If someone who got a tiger or tattoo, whatever is it, okay? Is it a good or a bad thing? Okay, just the tiger alone is not good or bad. Now the problem is, who is doing the tattoo for you? And why you are doing the tattoo? All these things, the intention and also the heart energy that this tattoo artist is uh, possessing will be the most uh, important factor to look at. For example, okay, for example, this person who is doing the tattoo, okay, imagine, okay, imagine he is like, he has some kind of contagious disease, okay, when he is poking the pin, disease goes through the pin and the ink and goes into you, okay, so you get contaminated. Now, that is the physical world stuff. Imagine in the spiritual world, okay, if you are being attacked by evil magic, like sorcery and stuff like that, okay? You have tons of dirty energy on you, spiritual energy. When you do tattoo for people, you are poking everything into their body and it doesn't go away, <laughs> okay? Water, liquid, ink, they contain energy. All liquid contains air, air energy. Okay? Air, like cheese. It contains everything. When they touch and somehow like touch it, okay? It contains all their energies as well when they do it, okay? So it pokes into you and inject their evil crap into you. So these people who are doing tattoo for other people, if their energy is very bad and their energy is very contaminated with evil crap, when they're doing it, they're putting evil magic, staining it into other people's body. And you get that thing for the whole life unless you like somehow remove it later on. And it's hard to remove. Okay? So as you go on and on, okay? So you have a bunch of tattoo right here and it's done by this evil person. Okay? This person who got a lot of crap. Okay? Now. You're welcoming in energies to you every day. You're welcoming in pre-heaven energies to you from this world every day when you go around. Okay, like I said before, you're always going around and attracting energy in onto you, absorbing. So you're absorbing things that are alike. Okay, so this guy have like super bad luck and he got marriage problem and he have like you know, some kind of disease, things like that, okay? You attract similar energy to you. Have fun. <laughs> okay? There's no way to remove it, right? It gets on you. Well, yeah. You can cover it up with a shirt, maybe. But what happened is the shirt, it's just, okay, a filter. So I will attract evil crap energy like that. It's very... Like this, this energy coming in, it's very fucked up, okay? It's going to screw me up very bad. I cover it up with green, okay? Now let's fuck me up with the green vibe. It's fine. <laughs> Same kind of shit done to you, okay? With a green vibe. Now change it to yellow, okay? With yellow vibe. <laughs> but you're still being fucked, okay? You're still being screwed by this thing. Because the tattoo cannot be removed. It's there. It's always there, right? So... When you're getting a tattoo, 
Okay, if the artist himself or herself is clean and having a very good intention to do it for you. I mean, look, I'm talking about when he or she is doing it, how is her mood right now, okay? Like, she can be a very nice person, but right now, her mood inside, she's not telling you because she, you're her client, right? She's just hiding it inside, but inside her mind, she is like very frustrated, very mad because of something happened at home. You don't know. When she's doing it, she's venting all that energy and intention into you. She don't need to want to do it. It's done automatically. Whatever she does, it's, it contains her energy and she is staining that into you. Imagine that, okay? Now, you get to stick with the thing for the rest of your life. You can't clean it out, okay? That's the problem, you cannot clean it out. <laughs> So yeah, there are places where people get tattoos from sorcerers like the Thailand and stuff like that. And those, when you get it, it's super mega fucked up. Because people are so fucking dirty. And they do that stuff for you. And they add in magic. Ooh, <laughs> have fun. <laughs> okay, so you'll be always having that issue. Okay? Always having that thing sticking on you and you have no choice 24 hours now there are also people who do tattoo for people to steal their luck okay you can steal their energy because when you stain in this stuff okay it can be done for a different purpose depending on what the artists have in their mind okay so when they want to suck in things whatever they mix into the ink and whatever okay it just stain there and act like a tracking device when you're home, it can suck up stuff from you whenever they like. Because they got a portaling device, a tracking device on you. Okay? So, having a tattoo, you are risking, like, this kind of stuff. Now, at the same time, there can be good tattoo, like what I said in the past, uh, where people do it to increase their, uh, their, their, Creativity, their feeling, whatever, okay, changing the thing way how they feel. Okay? So it depends. Now the problem is if you already got a tattoo, what to do? Okay, you don't want it, what to do? Like you don't want that stuff from the person, but I did it already, why am I stupid? Okay, what can I do? Okay? Well first of all, <laughs> um removing the tattoo it's the best idea because you really can remove it, right? But if you cannot remove it, then you've got to consecrate this tattoo with something else. Meaning, you remove the ownership of the tattoo from the artist being the first person who started to change it and make it an other thing. Like programming it for something that is better, something that is, that is good and like that okay because when the artist create this stuff for you like you're not tattooing yourself right so other people have to do it for you well when they do it for you they are the creator of the thing so they get to be the one in charge they they control the whole thing okay they're the Tao of this thing when they do it they're the boss okay so this person who, who is doing the tattoo will determine the future of this creation meaning the future of you as well okay so if they suck their luck suck you suck okay so yeah being tattooed by some, by someone who is like very crappy and you know those cheap uh, cheap tattoo artists and stuff like that okay you go there they, you know they are crappy they, that's why they're so you know and your luck is going to be similar to them because they do the stuff on you, okay? So they got to control your future as well. So yeah, to reprogram that ownership, to re like to consecrate this tattoo to something that can bring you a better future, something that will bring you something that is not harmful, something like that. Now to do that, you cannot just do it yourself, okay? You can't say, oh, this is my tattoo now. Well, it doesn't work that way because you're the one who paid okay so to do that being our disciple you have advantage over normal people 
Because now you can consecrate this thing after thinking about like a meaning for this thing. For example, you got a uh, whatever picture, like a tiger or whatever like that. Okay. Now, first of all, you need to understand why you want this tiger right here. It cannot be oh just for fun, okay? Because if you say it's just for fun, then it will randomly pick anything for you, okay? So it doesn't do it. It won't do you good. Now, when you understand oh this part of body, it can be good for whatever whatever purpose. Let's uh, give it this meaning, okay? Let's say I want more uh, power and such like that, okay? That's why I have the uh, tiger right here. Okay, you got a meaning, right? You got a meaning. Good. You got what you want, like what you want out of this tattoo, a meaning. Okay, not just for fun, for sure. And then next is you want to consecrate this tattoo to make it like, oh, I want to hook up a power source to draw power from an uh, a place that is supposed to be clean and not from this tattoo artist. Okay, <laughs> because because the thing is when. When you don't do that, okay, this tattoo is always going to pull in some energy from the artist and from pe things around you at the same time. So you don't want that to happen. So I changed the ownership. I consecrated. And now who is the one in charge? It's not a person anymore. It's your altar. Okay? Now the altar connect you to the lineage and connect you to the pre-heaven energies that is pure. And like not used, not brought, not by anyone, okay? And you, your heart right here, got to be, uh, you can be the one in charge of the altar. You're the owner, right? So in a way, you are the owner, but right now the altar is being the owner for you at this moment. So you use the stamp um, from the lineage, okay? And you have to stamp the tattoo and tick the tattoo, going through a ritual to make sure that tattoo is linked to this right now as where it should pull energy from and only from here when the this is changed now there's no more harm okay and then you tell the altar what you want that tattoo to mean to do for you for example this tiger okay i want it to give me power to help me whatever okay you tell the altar and program that energy so when energy goes into you it will do whatever you want it to do only and at the same time because you consecrate the, this tattoo with the uh, with the altar, you can always shut it off when you don't need. It. Okay, because with magic, you can shut off things with spells and stuff like that. You can do it. You can shut that off. Like right now, I don't want this program to to do whatever it's supposed to do. I can shut it off. After you shut it off, it's not going to work anymore. And the tattoo is like here physically, but spiritually is turned off. And that will make it very flexible for you because sometimes you don't want the tattoo to keep pumping the tiger energy into you. For example, if you are very mad and very hot tempered and you want yourself to cool down, right? You don't want that tiger to always make you mad. You want to be a little softer so that you don't scare the crap out of people. So that time maybe, oh, I want to reduce that, okay? let's. Tell the altar shut off this thing for me for two weeks, and when I do it, you can just disactivate that tattoo. See how cool it is to actually have talus magic, right? You can actually control things while you cannot change it on the physical side. You can change it in the spiritual side, so you don't get affected by this crap all the time. Now, why I do not accept disciples who have tattoos in the past? But basically the thing is because most of the people who get tattoos are very dirty and I don't like disciples being super dirty because when they start with this all the dirty stuff it's hard to teach and hard to um, like tell them oh you're you know what you got very screwed up and uh, this kind of stuff okay it's hard so but now um, I will I will change this rule because I am giving people a chance sometimes people get dirty and they don't know right so give them a chance to understand and then they can choose to remove it or they can choose to you know that the other way that I just said and basically you understand what it is and you know do you really like that and I can tell you that most of the tattoo artists are very dirty okay most of them are when you're super into body modification and all when you're super into body mods and you know all that kind of stuff um, basically you are 
going uh, the anti-nature route. You're like, you're destroying the normal, the natural form of a human being. So basically, it, pretty much most of the time, you're really going the, the other way, okay? So it's not really good. Um, so most of the time, these artists are dirty, and when you get tattooed, you get dirty. So, yeah. Now, getting into the second topic right now, since my camera just cut. Um, it's leading to, from tattoo, to gu. And what is gu? Gu, okay, gu is basically, you can say, spiritual worm, or bugs, or worms, insects, whatever you want to call it. And basically, a lot of people do gu by um, using insects, worms, whatever, and they store them into a container and let them kill each other. And then at the end, they have one survivor and they would take that and smash it and use it to do magic, okay? Now, people think that by doing that, it will be very powerful because the insect is very poisonous. And, well, is it really like that? And is goo really used to hurt people? Not all the time. What is goo and why it work like this, okay? There's a reason. The insect or animals, okay, or anything from the ground, like flowers, plants, herbs, okay, can be used as a medium of gu because what you're getting is the ground energy, what we call the dei hei, okay? We're getting that ground energy, and insects are full of that, okay? Insects is what we call the dei leng, which is, they're, they are like the um, D3 energy of the ground. They're like, they're, they're, the, the most, uh, most insects, their job whole life is to, to like move elements around inside the ground, okay? Process things inside the ground. So you can say they are like internal processor energy, okay? Internal processing energy. When this energy in the pre-heaven form is gathered up and sent to someone, by magic method, okay, it gets into you and change the way how inside works. So it can be like uh, changing the way how the inside, uh, like the organs work, or it can be changing the way how you think is also the same thing, like the same category. Now, when you use Gu magic, this kind of magic is most powerful when you use it to do mind controlling. Because it changed the way how the inside, okay, process and think, and also the, how the inside, the organs and stuff, he feel and act inside. So you can also use this to mess up people's health and stuff like that. Now, this is not the insect that is harming you, okay? Most people are scared because they look at the insect and the nasty stuff. But yeah, when it comes to magic, you're only getting what I call their soul, their energies inside these living beings. That's why you need them to kill each other. Because when this insect kill the other insects coming here, okay? Now, eat everything, and the soul, the energy, also got eaten up by this insect. And other insects eat it. And, well, this contains the two insects inside the thing, okay? Three insects inside here. So at the end, this is the survivor. It got all that soul energy. So you take that number, this one, okay, put it here, smash it, and you get all that energy that is from all the other insects at the same time. And it becomes very strong. So basically, it's all about getting that element, that, that pre-heaven energy inside, the soul energy. And the energy is what we call the uh, number two, black energy. This energy is a very uh, powerful processing energy. And it doesn't do anything if you just have this energy alone. So the group magic uh, person who is doing the magic, they need to have an intention, the heart energy right here, that, that acts as a, a uh, leader, uh, or you can say uh, the CPU of the whole thing, okay? This is like, this, this intention drives this energy around and tell the energy what to do. So it can be in many forms. Uh, it can be expressed as like food, symbols, spells, whatever it is. All what they're doing is they're programming this energy 
with a task, a duty, whatever they're supposed to do, and then send it off. When they send it off in whatever way, the person gets it and it gets get from outside and go soak in and basically it starts to change the way this person think and all that stuff work internally. Okay? Now this is really like tattoo. Because tattoo is about this green energy, the D3 energy outside as well. Okay? It's all about the energy outside that will affect the way how you feel. Uh, and people feel about you and and that is soaked back in and affect the way you think and the way how your mind thinks and feels so gu and tattoo comes hand in hand when people want to do a gu on you they can be doing some kind of marking on you and when they do it okay that stuff will be the medium and sometimes they use ink for the gu as well to, okay to put into the tattoo so, gu can be done very easily, even without killing worms. Because what it is, after all, okay, gu is about a bunch of internal processing uh, energies in the pre-heaven dimension. And this is what we call the sam big seilok, the two kinds of energy, number three and number four energy, dark green and gamma green, this two energy. And these can be created when you think and when you're getting inspiration and stuff like that. So when you want to brew up these kind of energy, okay, all you need to know is like all you want, all, all you need to do is visualize and then um, uh, it's like you spiritually recreate something in your mind. And when you can lead this thing, okay, into a medium, let it hold that and then give it to someone, send it off to someone, you already cast a form of gu. Let's say, um, let, let, let's get rid of worms and bugs, okay? Let's say, maybe I want to do a gu, uh, oi ting gu, okay? Love magic, gu magic on someone. Now, this is very common, but not sure where it comes from, okay? Very common. When, <laughs> when you think about uh, another person, let's say there's a girl that you want to have sex with her and something like that, okay? There's evil magic going on here. Now, this person don't like you, okay? You want to do a blue magic on her. Then what will happen is, you think and visualize and then do the whole picture inside, like making up a whole movie inside your brain, okay? Like you're fucking with her, okay? All the sex and stuff like that going on, okay? So all that stuff is all around. And while you're doing it, okay, you can be holding on to a bottle of water or something like that. And then, oh, wow, <laughs> okay, all the visualization, but you're not doing it, okay. Now, after oh, you're all done, closing your eyes, okay, don't open the eyes. You look at this and they go, <sighs> okay, three times. <sighs> now, this water contains the goo that you just did. And what, what you want to do is, okay, you can take this thing and give it to her or mix it into her drink and she will have your goo magic right away. Now what happened to her? Well, it will carry all that stuff and doo -doo on her and floats around. So imagine that energy is like gas, okay, a bunch of green gas energy around her. And it affects, it's like a cloud around you and it starts to affect the way you feel and think. So suddenly, she feel very sexual. She feel something like the need of want to have sex and stuff like that. Not really you, okay? Because basically, she don't know you. <laughs> so she will have this vibe going on, the sexual vibe, and make her think about that suddenly. There's like this and that popping up, make her want to have sex and stuff like that. Now, usually the evil sorcerer will make use of this and then plus a little bit of drug and then go up and there goes the prey okay so that's how the Yivo stuff is done now there are like good gu as well okay like doing it for a good reason now for example you can be let's say uh, going to a competition right and you're supposed to uh, let's say you're a fighter and you're supposed to fight okay very simple uh, competition so you fight and you win okay now you think about the other person right now and then like inside your mind and you recreate the whole event inside your mind while you're 
thinking, 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 and how how to fight Brock here, punch here, he is down, and now I'm going to kick, okay, all that stuff, and then at the end, you won. Okay, you create the whole thing, right, inside your mind, and then, right now, you contain that into something. Maybe, uh, let's say this one, uh, let's uh, use a candle or something like that, okay, hold the candle, think about everything, and then... And then after that is done, okay, basically you light the candle and then, and then, okay, you hold the candle, light it, and then wait a second, visualize and say what you want to happen. And then, when you do that, okay, the candle goes out, smoke comes out, all that goo is going to be on you and around you. And that's goo as well. When you go to the, the, um, the, the fight, okay, this energy around you will swamp over the other person. And it will recreate, like it will help the reality to recreate the event according to this pattern. More inclined toward this route. And so when you fight, the more um, you're able to recreate whatever is in the reality that you just visualize. Okay? So who is like this? And it's not always have to be the worms. But worm is also a very nice um, metaphor. Because what it is, is basically like something that drills into things and change the way how the inside works. Okay? Inside. Like worms going inside an apple, inside the mud, and then go around and around and like that, changing the stuff inside. So that can be goo as well. Sometimes people can be casting goo on you by accident or they did not intend to do so. Okay? Like when I'm eating with you. Okay, sometimes I'm like uh, eating with you and we share a plate of food in the center. Like chopsticks, okay? And then put it back, okay? So someone keep visualizing or thinking or all that stuff about bad about you. Something like cursing you, you know, to whatever. And then when they put their chopstick, saliva carries all that stuff and go inside. Okay, when you... The goo get in you already, okay? Sometimes like this. When... Especially when there are religious people who like pray and stuff before they eat, okay? All that goo energy when they're thinking and stuff like that will go into the food. That's why when people keep praying before eating, okay? All that stuff and then they think about their God or whatever. That energy, okay, it's the goo and every day they consume the goo of their own religion back into themselves. Making them more bonded to their religion, okay? But they don't realize it, but that's goo magic as well. So when you're sitting around these people and they're doing it, okay, the goo contaminates everywhere. So it actually, if you're not the same religion and they're doing that kind of stuff, you eat it and it's like evil magic on you because you're not the same religion. So that can be a form of goo as well. Very scary, right? Now, right here, I think you should understand right now um, what the goo and what the tattoo is about. Okay, so when we're actually picking a... Uh, uh, clothing every day when your mind have a little uh, mindset right there about why you're choosing that color why you're choosing this uh, design and stuff like that like with, with the tiger you want more power etc okay the energy that you are tracking will be more programmed to incline to what you to create what you want and welcome what you want okay if you don't have this mindset you're, there's like no nobody in charge so things come in can be very neutral it can happen the bad way and the way that you don't want it to be so whenever we pick uh, clothing for everyday use like oh red clothing blue clothing you think about that energy the color and why you like this color today and when you think about it the color when you hold it okay, the color get programmed and there's a leading uh, power right there that that actually uh, bring this energy in according to what you, why you want it. For example, today I want red because I want people to feel my power outside. I wear this red shirt. When I wear it, people can feel that much better. Okay, like that. You can be wearing red because I want to do work faster or whatever. Okay, so that you need to watch my other video on the colors and energies and stuff like that. But basically the, the whole concept is we are like a container. When you do tattoo and stain things on the top or you put fabric on the top, it's the same. Light goes in and you're attracting this kind of stuff that you put on top, okay? And it goes inside you. 
Okay? So if you don't want that stuff to go inside you, you don't put it on top of your body. Uh, very simple. It's like you don't like, uh, like, let's say you don't like onion. You don't put onion on top of you because you're attracting onion energy. Okay? It's like you don't want bees to come. You don't put honey on your body. Very simple. So this idea uh, should get you going and understand why. So now I, I do accept people with tattoo, but I will slowly lead them to understand the theory and choose what they want to do and basically, um, well, yeah, it's, it's like that, okay? So that's my little uh, lecture on this. Not little, pretty long. <laughs> so hope you like it and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye!